to this uh, video, new video on this series that I think it's um, it's uh, it's gonna be helpful to somebody out there who are trying to understand what's going on with Prisoner by the Curtain. So in this episode, we'll be talking about the overriding system in Prisoner Shop. How does it work? and especially what are the classes that are doing the work behind the curtain. So before that, we jump into this. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe because uh, again, Mr. YouTube is telling me that uh, I'm losing a lot of uh, a lot of views because of the, um, of the people who are watching my videos does not leave a thumb up and don't leave a comment. So please, please, please uh, just the best like uh, 10 seconds to uh, hit that thumb up and to leave um, a couple of words. All right, so let's get into this. So as I said, we'll be talking about the overriding system in Presto Shop and how does it work? Okay, so the very first thing that I I've did uh, I did here is simply I went to um, defines the the method or the files containing a lot of um, defines variables. Uh, or uh, constant, sorry. So here I simply pick the PS override DIR, which is basically uh, pointing to the PS road override directory, which is the override uh, directory into our um, our installation of PrestaShop. And I searched through uh, the entire website, the entire source code, specifically in the .php files, and from there. Let me close this for a second. So it does show me. Uh, oops, let me, I would like to make this bigger. So it does show me that I have like five or six files of PHP containing that PS override DIR. Okay, so the very first one is dispatcher. We'll be coming back into this in the coming videos, but I'd like really to jump into uh, each 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 time this uh, variables or this counts has been called so here uh, it's called inside the dispatch method that uh, we have little command here find the controller and instantiate it i think that's self-explanatory here that uh, we could get a better idea about what this myth do uh, and uh, simply here we have a switch case here in this front controller and we do test if this self test it is front controller or a uh, front controller front it's a front controller i'm just saying no sense thing so we do instantiate it and we do leak that if it does exist inside the override directory but we won't invest more time on this since i said that this is not the file that we are needing to look um, to understand the overriding work so um i will jump directly into modules.php and open this iteration so here we have core load modules right and here i left like a uh, little debugging uh, uh, instructions just to echo the module name so let me talk about a bit sorry about this method it's called core load module it does accept a module name as parameter so it will be string normally and after that it does do um, an include once ps module dir which is uh, normally defined inside um yeah it's defined here inside the defines.php so like, we can use that um that name to find it here so this is it so it's basically pointing to the modules directory nothing really fancy and from there we uh concatenate the module name.php so this is why in prestashop always you you should do like my module like this dot php and the class name of the module must be exactly the same this um this is why we have that kind of convention just to to make this code work and we'll be able to um to load um the module and instantiate it later okay let's carry on with this so once we do in the include we have this variable r set it to false we don't know yet why after that we have an if statement so we have tools we are using the helpers tools and we are calling a static method which is called file exists no cache so if i jump into this i suppose that will be ah uh, yeah so it does clear stat cache so it does clear the cache and return the file exists so here this um this method will actually look for that module that is not inside the cache because sometimes PrestaShop keep the cache even if you do and install the modules or delay the file. 
So this method will make sure that um, this module does exist into our file systems. Okay, get back here. So again, we are checking. So normally this will be uh, a Boolean. So it will return a Boolean here. So if that's true, then we go for the next step, which is include once again here. But this time we'll be requiring, requiring sorry, the module by this time from the override directory. So include once uh, and a series of concatenation modules. There they are module name, module name dot PHP. So if you still remember the way we do override modules in PrestaShop, so let me just jump into my file explorer here and go to the override DIR, which is this one, and we go to modules. So this is the main folder, the override, and here we have the module name. Okay, so module name normally it will be inside here. So I suppose we're having like PS home slider or something like that. And after that, we'll be having the file name. It will be home slider dot PHP. That's it. Pretty cool. Okay. So after that, oh, sorry, it must be here. I am, I'm here, sorry. I was I was talking about this little line, um, 111.54. Okay, so after that, we have the override module name dot override. So basically here, if you still remember when we do an override a class of a certain module, for example, the home slider, we do write something like that. So it'd be home slider override that extend the the main home slider for example so it's like this syntax so here we actually we are sorry we're actually building or constructing the sorry oops the override uh, module name is that correct to say that example here home slider override okay let me paste that there pretty cool after that, what is happening? We have an if statement again. We have class exists, so we have the override and false. And this is um, like a default files, uh, default sorry method from the PrestaShop from Presta from the PHP world. And it does simply take two parameters. The first one is the class name that we need to check if it does exist, and the second one is the auto load and is set it by default to true. In this case, it's false. Okay, so if this class does exist, if our overrided overridden is that correct to say class does exist inside that specific file uh, inside the overriding dir then we do the rest so we, this r that we did define here which is set it to false would take a self instance module name that is passed as a variable here as a parameter sorry and it will equal a service locator and we're calling a static method get we pass the override name of the module so here we need to jump into this get this is static method and try to see what's going on inside so here we are landed into a certain slc adapter let me make this more bigger okay so we are landed into an src adapter service locator and we are under a specific method the static method called get so we don't have, unfortunately, again, no good description about this class. What does it do? Again, the the, the default uh, PrestaShop command for each classes. But we're trying to understand this ourselves. So let's uh, say we have a set service container. What kind of constructor we have? We don't have a constructor, I think. But let's go straight forward to this get method. We have a couple of words here. They said that get a service depending on its given service name. So service name, if we move back into the where we did call this method, it's uh, basically the override. So for instance, we'll be passing something like this here. So let's do service locator. And here, oh, sorry, we need to get get and we'll be passing um, a string. Basically, that will be home slider override. OK, so getting back to our service locator here and we have again an if statement so basically this would be where the true or false a boolean so if empty self service container uh, or null equal to self service container then we throw an exception what is this self service container so it's basically getting the container and I suppose this method must be called somewhere else inside the code to define this uh, this uh, static parameter uh, or attribute, sorry, because we're talking about a class here.
So this attribute is somewhere defined, somewhere else inside the code is defined. And we are here simply testing if it's correct, I mean, it's not empty and it's valid. It's not, uh, it's not like a no. So also we throw an exception elsewhere. If everything went well with this if statement, we do return a self service container make. So we are calling another method with our, uh, with our uh, module name, new module name, the one that it looks something like this. Yep. So I would like really to jump into this again, to this method and see what's going on there. So now we are landed into an SRC core foundation LOC container. Well, we are really deep here into the source code of precision. I don't really know what's going on here, but we're trying to find out there. So return a do make. We're calling another method here, which is do make. So let's click into that method and see what's going on. Again, no description, nothing at all. We need to figure out ourselves going on here. We have a service name and we have an array already seen. Well, okay, that's not really so clear about that name. All right, so we have an if array key exists. We have a service name and already seen. So here we're checking if this service name does exist inside the already seen. So at this if statement here, we are checking if this service name again, I would like really to uh, to um, to represent things the way that will be in real life example. So here we'll be having our uh, our name, home slider override, for example, and we have little array containing the already seen weird things. Okay, so if this array exists, the service name does exist inside this already screen, then we'll be throwing an exception like sprintf cyclic dependency detected while building uh, that certain class name. Okay, so here just make sure to not load the overriding class twice. Yeah, so this is basically what does it do here. So if we moved correctly, and I mean, if everything went well from this line, then we get into already seen, we uh, create a new entry into this array and we set that to true. After that, what we do here? So if this knows the service name, okay, then we bind, oh, sorry, if does not know because you have this exclamation, I think it's called. Um, if this is not knows, if this is false, yeah, this kind of word names, if this is false, then we do bind this dot bind service name and service name. Yep. So uh, let's see what this bind do. Can I just see the documentation service name, constructor, and shared? False. Okay. Let's jump into this, which is this one. Again, what's happening here? It does accept service name and constructor and shared, which is by default false. All right. So if this knows service name, we throw an exception elsewhere. We do this dot binding, which is basically an array here, and we create a new entry into this array, which is called binding. And after that, we define two properties or we, or we insert actually another array inside this array entry with two, uh, two entries constructor and shared and by default shared is set it to false. So here actually we are creating a sort of an array of a map containing uh, the name of the module that we did override. So again here, and uh, uh, let me just draw this that we could understand this. So here we suppose that we'll be having an array like this. So we'll be having, oops, come on. We're going to have array of writing. So this is our array. This is the entry that we are creating. And this will contain by itself, oops, another array containing constructor equals to something like this. Okay. So we are building actually an array of indexes with keys are basically the name of the module, of the overrided module, or overridden module, sorry. Okay. So once that done, we return this and this will be containing this binding. So if I go back to this make, do make, and we were here. Okay, we were here actually. Then after that, we do binding service name. So we are retrieving 
that index. So as we said, as I explained here, array will be containing many of them, let's say 10, 11, 15, whatever. So this like, well, it will be number one, number two, let's do some fancy editing here. I'd like to place, so this would be number one, number two, number three, number four, and let's suppose these are kind of uh, custom modules that we are doing of a raid. So if I go back to my do make here and at the line 151, here we are getting basically the index of our of Reddit of Ridden. I can still have trouble with this. For example, here will be home slider override and we are storing that into this variable the cmb variables and if we have shared so checking if we should share what shared mean and array key exists service name this instance says with an s i mean i, I think that this instances will be basically containing uh the list of instances or uh, a list of instances of these modules okay so if i go back here to this um kind of ugly example i suppose that somewhere here in the code and uh, for each that will be looping through this array and taking each constructor and executing it to create a new instance and store all these instances inside this dot instances so basically here we'll be having a list of instances of these modules so here we'll be having an array like like so and we have for example instance module one instance module two etc something like that okay so let's go to do make again come on get back here um where is it so if it's shared and this array key exists to this name of this instance, as we do return that instance that is already instantiated. So here we're trying to avoid having two instances of the same module. So this is the singleton in a certain way. Okay. Elsewhere, sorry, <clears throat> elsewhere, elsewhere, if still everything fine and we don't have an instance of our home of right home slider of a right, then we need to create one. So this is why we have a variable called constructor here. And we have a binding, the binding, if you still remember, it's basically holding the this binding service name. Okay, so here we get the constructor name. And if it's callable, and callable is coming from the PHP world. So verify that content of variable can be called as a function, pretty self-explanatory. So if that is callable, that constructor, that for example, would be something like home slider of ride, then we call use a func, we use this uh, magic function from the PHP, which basically call a user function given by the first parameter. Yeah, pretty simple. So here we store that key or that instance of that certain module into this TMP variable called service. Else if is a string or is not a string. So here we have a couple of words, user already provided the value, no need to construct it. We simply inject the constructor to into the service else another else here assume that the constructor is a class name then we have another method that will take care of instantiating this module class depending on the constructor name and also it does pass the already seen just again to make sure that we don't inject an instance twice inside our already seen um <clears throat> sorry uh, our already seen uh, table or array at the end we have if binding shared this instance shared service yeah so here you know it really look like the dependency injection way in a certain way that we do store everything inside what we call array of dependencies and we make them available for all the others or other uh, components of our system so here if we do say that this instance of our module will be shared then sorry then uh, this instance will be injected inside um, this instances with an S. I just make sure that you you hear the S, and we create another entry with the service name, and we do store that instance. Okay, good. And finally, we do return a service which will be basically here 
instance of the module. Okay, I'm bad with the writing today. Instance. Okay, good. Off. Pretty cool. Now we could go back to our service locator. We do understand what's going on with this method, and we will be moving one step back from uh, to modules of PHP here, where we did call the get, and we store that into our R variable. And after that, if R or if not R, and class exist module with a false our self instance service locator get the modules okay so again we are calling the same things here look at this couple of lines service locator get overrided elsewhere here if something went wrong then we'll be returning an instance of the not non overridden module so basically the module name is the module name is the main module name not with overridden prefix at the end of it Okay, and finally here we do return the R that again will be, be <coughs> sorry, what's wrong with me today? <laughs> that would be containing the instance of our module. So what about printing this R? Oh, let me do um, echo here. And yeah, let's get the name echo. Um, let's do um, pre here. Again, I like so much the pre because it does give me that formatted style. So, uh, comma, comma, and here, let's call this. If you still remember, we have a name property on each uh, module. So, normally, if everything went well and we did correctly understand what's going on with this code, we should say the name. So, this is the old debugging. Let me just get rid of fit, which is this line here. Put that into a command. Now, refreshing. Boy. Good job. Good job, boys. Okay. So hopefully that helped you a bit to understand what's going on with our code here, what uh, and how the overriding system, at least it's kind of hint uh, to understand it. So again, if you like this video, please, please again, for God's sake, uh, do subscribe to this channel, leave a couple of words because really, really it does help this um, freaking algorithm code to uh, YouTube code to, to boost this channel. I think I deserve more views and more people interesting uh, interested on it so thank you for watching do appreciate your time hopefully you're still watching until this and see you in the coming video of this series probably if you like it thank you for watching and peace